So welcome everyone to this very special cystic fibrosis yoga session for children with CF from ages 6 to 12 or their siblings or anyone else who might benefit from it. We are hosting this today um, in celebration of International Yoga Day. We thought it might be something nice, something a little bit different for our members. So we hope you enjoy it. I'm Nicola. I am the communications officer in CFI and behind the scenes we have Liz Jakes who is also a member of the team here. So we're going to start with just a little bit of centering, just find in our body, in the room, at this moment. So you can sit however you like, whether it's cross leg like me, you can sit upon your feet like this, or you can just sit in the comfort of your armchair or your, I mean, your, your grown up's arms, whatever is there with you. And what I'd like you to do is just gently close your eyes if you're comfortable with that. If you're not, that's okay. Pick a spot on a wall, look at that spot. And we're going to try and waken up our senses. So the first thing we're going to do is take a few breaths in and out through our nose and see what we can smell. So breathing in and breathing out, and just paying a little bit of attention to whether you can smell dinner cooking. Maybe you are, you have incense burning in your house, sometimes we do in mine. Maybe you can smell your pet or your dog. Just take a moment to breathe in and out and focus in on that sense. What can you smell? And when you've identified it, smell something, or maybe you haven't identified it, then we're going to move on to what you can hear. So do you think you can listen really carefully with your eyes open or closed and try and see if you can identify two sounds that are going on around you? Maybe there's a telly in another room. Maybe you can hear the traffic outside. Or with the sun shining, maybe you are outside and you can hear the birds singing. And when you find those two senses, those two things you can hear, we're going to see about what you can feel. So if you're like me and you're sitting on the ground, I can feel myself on the ground. So I can feel where I meet the ground. It's my feet, it's my behind, it's my this knees up and this knees down. I can feel my hands on my legs. I can feel my hair tickle my neck. What can you feel in your body? And maybe try and we'll get to three things you can identify, your sense of touch. Now moving on from there, let's try and see what we can feel. So what happened with you? Again, eyes open or closed. They used to call this a look inside out. So if you have a little think, focus on how you're feeling right now. Are you happy? Tired maybe? The end of the school year, it might be tiring. Are you excited? Bored? Anything that you're feeling, it's all okay. Sad even, maybe? Don't think too much about it. Just say, okay, that, that's like what my heart is telling me right now. And then we let it pass. We won't think about it too much. And the last thing we're going to do, we're going to rub our hands together so they're a little bit warm. And when they are, take breath in with your nose, cover your eye. Then open your eyes so you're looking at your hand and bring your hands down. 
in the last part of this centering, I want to pick out five things in the room that you haven't noticed before. So for me, there are scratches on the end of the blind. I never saw that before. There's a little glisten on one of the bulbs on the lampshade for me. So things like that, things you don't normally see because we don't normally look. And when you're ready, you have your five things you can see, your feelings, you've listened, you've touched. The last thing we're going to do where is your tongue in your mouth? Is it touching the backs of your teeth? Is it down into the face of your mouth? Is it up into the palate? And I want you to try and bring it to the back of your teeth. And from there, we're going to take a big breath in with our nose and bring our arms all the way up. And down. And breathing up. We're waking up our body again, and down. And then one more time, and down. And then give your legs a stretch out, give them a wiggle, maybe roll your toes around. I don't know if you can see my toes or not. And what we're going to do now. So we know how we're feeling. We've got our senses open up. Just going to wake up our body a bit. So I want you to stretch your hands out in front of you and squeeze them as tight as anything. Squeeze them as tight as you can. Try and squeeze all the muscles in your arms, the muscles in your legs, maybe the muscles in your face, muscles in your bum, muscles in your tummy. Squeeze everything. And try and take a little selfie of how that feels. That's tense, that's tight. Take a big breath in and then let it all flop. That's all relaxed. That's how we want to feel after yoga. But pretty much all the time, but it's kind of impossible. So we do that one again. Tense your whole body. Squeeze the muscles. Scrunch your toes up. Scrunch your fingers. Tighten your arms. Your shoulders maybe bring them up to your ears, because sometimes that happens without us knowing. Deep breath in. <laughs> Sit down. And we do one more time. So we're trying to squeeze. Try to remember that feeling, that tight feeling, because sometimes when things get on top of us or we get worried or we get scared or we get angry, that's how our body feels and we don't always notice. So when we do, we can breathe <laughs> and our body feels good when we look at this. So what I want to do now, we are going to cross our legs again, if that feels good. But I want you to cross the other way around. So last time I had my left leg inside my right leg on the outside. So this time, I'm going to put the right leg on the inside and the left leg on the outside. And it will feel different because each side of our body is different. You want to bring your hands down. We're going to do a few little twists and bends and wake up our spine and our back. We're going to breathe in, bring our arm up. And breathe out. Try and see if you can get a stretch into your thigh. Only go as far as you good. Yoga should never hurt. Yoga should never be painful. So if it hurts, come back up and go to where your body's telling you. Great thing about yoga, it teaches you to listen to your body. And come back, and we do the other side. And stretch into your side. So you might see your ribs stretching away. Get a little bit separate as we stretch. And bring that back down. We do each side one more time. The first time is always kind of the stiffest. Second time, you might feel a little bit freer. I just feel how good it feels to stretch. And we're going to bring our hands out to the side and breathe in, bring them together, join your fingers together. Make sure you push your fists away. Never stretch into our shoulders. And if you can, and if it feels good, you can round your back or go to the side so you can see. Curve into it like you're making the letter C. And then come up. And push away your hand and curve into your back again. 
And one last time. Don't look with stuff. And then when you're finished there, you want to stretch your arms around the back. Clasp your hands. Yeah, if that's not for you, that's perfect. You want to try and bring them up a little bit? Maybe you're super flexible. And well, I'm going to stop. And just count to three. And feel the stretch. And then bring your hand all the way around the back onto your knees. I'm going to face them again. This one, we're going to have our hands on our knees. We stretch our shoulders, our arms, give them a good stretch, our chest and our back. Now we're going to do the tops of our hips. So with our hands on our knees, we're going to make big circles. Round and round and round and round and round. And round. Not too fast, don't want to get dizzy. So maybe three or four. I'm going to go with four. And then three. And then go back the other way. And you might not feel that yet. But that is like it up the top to you. And back. And the next one, we're going to get top of this. We're going to go onto our hands and knees. And we're going to stretch our legs so that we make sure I fill in the camera. Hands nice and wide like stars. Okay, that gives you the very best space. We're going to stretch our foot back. And then bring our toes down and feel the stretch into the back of your legs. And maybe count to three or four again with that one. When you're done, bring your knee down. We'll do the other one. Right. And bring your toes down. You have four. And that's down. Press them back onto your bum. At this point, I'm going to take off my socks because I feel too much. You can't see my toes. You need to clean up this. Stretch your legs out nice and wide. And now we're stretching the inside of our legs. Bring your toes up. Never let them go floppy. Up for yoga. Take a big breath in. And then we're going to cross over. The opposite side. Breathe in. And out. Now this is actually really cool because it is... Stretching your legs, it's stretching your back. It's also working your brain. The brain has to work extra hard when we cross this midline in front of us. So if you need to do homework or what well, you won't be thinking about that this, at this time of the year, working the brain like this always helps when you have to do something with it. One or two more. And we come back into the middle. The last one we're going to do while we're here, two feet in, join them together. And you might know this one, it's called a butterfly. So we're going to keep our back nice and straight. Just fly our legs up and down like a butterfly. Just make sure your back's nice and straight. Remember how we checked in on our breathing and on our senses before? Maybe let's do that one more time. So if you're comfortable, you can keep doing butterfly or you can crisscross your legs. Close your eyes and just check. Are there any new feelings or different feelings in your body or your heart? Is your breath a little deeper? Is it the same? Has anything changed? And if it has, okay. And if it hasn't, okay. Now, when you've checked that, and you know, we're going to stand up in the safest way to stand up, come sit in. Start on our knees, get one foot up, and we're going to push ourselves up the other So here, what we're going to do, we're going to do the warrior poses, which some of you might be familiar with. We start our hands and our hips, and have a look down at your feet. Remember, I said before to stretch your fingers wide, it gives you good base. Same for your toes. So lift up your toes. And see, so you can put them down one by one. I can do it on one foot. My other foot doesn't like doing it too much. When you do it, see how stable you feel. It's a funny thing to stand and close your eyes. Our body's not used to it, so we might feel a little bit wobbly. Just check and see. But don't fall down. Open your eyes if you can fall. 
And then we're going to stretch our feet back and to one side, nice and wide. And we're going to push our heels out a tiny bit more, leaving our toes where they are. So that gives you a good stance. Now with your, this is my right leg. We're going to stay on our heel and point our toes outwards. So you have one toe facing the screen and one toe facing the way. I'm going to take a deep breath in. Bring your arms to your shoulders. Careful that the shoulders don't come up as well. We're going to be nice and relaxed and down. Take a breath in. And then we're going to turn. So our belly button is going in more or less the same direction as our toes. If you need to fix your foot, do. Bend that front knee and bring your hands up. Remember the shoulders. We're only bringing our arms and our hands up, not our shoulders. And we're going to count to three. One, two, three, and then what we're going to do is bring our belly back right to the front. Fix your back foot if you need to. Keep the front leg bent. Bring your tongue, arms out, and then look over the bent leg side. Make sure your left arm doesn't drop. You want it up, shoulder height, but not ear height. And three, two, one. That was warrior one and warrior two. Warrior three is tricky, but if your favorite pose is three pose, I'm pretty sure you're going to be awesome at this. So put your hands on your hips. Bring your belly around again. Leave the front leg where it is. Pooch your back leg up. And then very gently, see where your balance is. Maybe you need to keep your tiptoe down. Maybe you can lift it. Maybe you can fly. Maybe you can turn yourself in a capital T. See what works for you. How long you can hold it, maybe three or four seconds. And then gently come back down. And we'll do all of it again on the other side. Bring your toes around. This time the opposite foot points away. One foot to the screen. We can start with our hands and our hips here. Kind of like a holster. This is where the direction of our tummy. Bring it around to be in the same direction as our foot. Bend that knee. And bring your arms up beside your ears, but not up to your ears, just beside your ears. And if you want, you can look up to the sky. Depends on your balance for today. When you're ready, leave your legs where they are. Turn your belly back around and bring your arms stretched out. Remember, this one, you don't want to fall. Straight line. And then look over your hands or your bed up the side of your bent ankle. And breathe in and out. And then the last one. You ready? Hands on your hips. Pivot, pivot. I didn't see. I might move back to this. Where your balance is. Now, the cool thing is, kind of like an experiment, your balance will be different on one side than the other. So, see which side is easy for you. Can you see me wobbling? They all wobble. You might be more wobbly on one side than the other. So, then it might be in the middle. Feet forward, hands on your hips, jump yourself. Yeah, I was told just before we started this that three pose is a favorite. So I'm going to show you three different levels of three pose. You pick whichever one suits you the best. We're going to start with our hands and our hips. We're going to start with our left leg. So bring your toes up and then turn your knee out. Now this might be enough for you. Keep your tips on the ground. Your foot can be alongside your ankle, but not pushing into it. And that's the first way. And bring our hands up. If that's really easy for you, that's okay. If it's hard, that's okay too. Maybe you want to challenge yourself and bring your foot up to your shin, but not your knee. You'll hurt your knee if you do that. So bring it onto your shin. And maybe you can bring your hands together above your head. Or maybe you want to leave them here, that's okay. If you're 
an uber tree person, bring up Roy up. Yeah. The key to this, when I say this, as I'm about to fall down, is pushing the foot and the leg together. See what works for you. Me, today, I'm here. Otherwise, I'll fall on my face. And then when you're ready, you foot down, and we do the other side. So tiptoes on the ground if you want. Give yourself a bit of stability. On your shin, maybe half muscle really. Or up, right up the top. Everyone's different and different means it's okay to put your foot in the other place. Just see what suits you. Is this true? Do that, though. And then when you're in, we're going to bring our feet down, our hands down. And just like we checked in before to see how we were doing, let's check in your hands. So spread your toes wide. Bring your hands and bring the palms to face the front. And then your shoulders down. Remember, they creep up to the knee, the ears a lot. And just check in how your heart is doing, where your breath is, how you're feeling. And then slowly, we'll open our eyes. If you want, you can try this jump. It's cross your leg. Don't fall. Grab someone if you think you might fall. You can sit down. Yeah. Easy position. It's all easy pose. It's kind of easy to do. But what's not so easy is to close your eyes and concentrate. That's what we do with practice. Now let's see how we're doing. Okay. Last thing we're going to do, the last pose is bridge pose, which you might know. So what we need to do, we're going to scooch around onto our bum, bring our knees up, our feet there, just nice and flat, and spread your toes again to make sure everything's okay. We're going to come down onto our... So if you want to stretch out your arms and your hands and your fingers, and bring your feet kind of near the tips of them, you don't have to touch, maybe just a little bit near. What we're going to do, we're going to curl our spine off the ground and then put it back down again, but nice and slowly. So let's start. So to do this, we're not just going to use our, our hips to push it up. We're going to push into our feet, give our legs extra strength, use our leg muscles, tense them like we did in the beginning and use that to lift up our back and our hips. And then slowly, can you Roll your spine down, bit by bit, vertebrae by vertebrae. We do it three times. Breathe the magic number, don't you know? And there. And the last one. This time we're going to hold it up there. We're going to count to five. If you feel comfortable, you can count to six. It's entirely up to you. And then gently roll back down. Bring your knees onto your tummy. Wrap your arms around and give yourself a squeeze because sometimes it's nice just to hold ourselves. If you want, you can kiss your knees a little bit. I used to be able to do that. I haven't done yoga in a while. And then one leg up and stretch it down. Put the other leg up and stretch it down. And then we're going to take our hands, spread like we did before, but this time we're going to put them on the ground beside us with our palms facing the ceiling. So we've come to the relaxation part of our yoga. Now, before we start, I suggested having a blanket and either an eye pillow or a sock. So if you want to get yourself nice and cozy, it's a bit warm for blankets, I know. So it's up to you. Either put the blanket over you or you can fold it and use it as a pillow under your head. You decide what makes you feel good right now. We'll take a few minutes to get ourselves set up. And then when you are lying down, whether the pillows or the blanket is over you or under your head, your eye pillow or your super clean socks, you the brand new, I couldn't miss it otherwise. You could it. You put them over your eyes. And that's just to help keep 
the brighten set. If you have an eye pillow, it will be heavier than a sock. And that's really nice. Some people like a little bit of weight on their body. The feeling of the heaviness helps people relax too. So some people will have a heavy blanket or, you know, that eye pillow. So it's up to you. It's very individual. So take a moment or two there. I'm going to sit up so that I can not fall asleep when I'm guiding you through your body scan. If you stay lying down and you stay cozy, in a moment or two, I'm going to talk you through the body scan. And then Liz is going to play a little bit of music just for you to chill and relax on this international yoga day. Now, if you're not entirely ready, that's okay, take your time. I'm going to start with bringing your attention to the tip top of your head. So lying down in relaxation, it's called the Shavasana. Eyes open or closed, or with the eye pillow. Find what works. Bring your attention. Like a sound. Imagine there's a color. Slow going through your mind. So you're playing with color. So the color that makes you feel relaxed and calm. Or some that could be like blue or white. Another brighter color. Entirely up to you. And that color goes through your heart, your eyes, your ears, your cheeks, your tongue in your mouth, your chest locked down, and your jaw. Maybe give your jaw a little wiggle because sometimes you hold it without even noticing. So that's all the muscles in your face. Bring your relaxing colors through your neck, your shoulders, all the way down, nice, flowy, through your right arm, elbow, wrist, hands and fingers. Come in the middle front, left arm, left elbow. Left wrist, left hand. Color continues to move through your chest, your back. Come all the way, moving further and further down. Relaxing everything that passes through. Your hip. Your thighs, right leg, right knee, right chin and thigh muscles, right ankle, right foot, and your toes, and then your left leg, right knee. Your your calf and your shoulder, left ankle, left foot, and toes. And for your whole body, you illuminate it with this beautiful calm and color. Color that makes you feel relaxed. And enjoy for a moment. Enjoy the feeling. And then gently begin to wiggle your toes and wiggle your fingers. So reintroducing movement to our body. Do it gently. Move too fast, we might get dizzy. 
Maybe take a stretch. Yawn. Whatever your body feels like doing to wake itself back up. And then slowly roll onto one side if you're lying down. Now use your hands to push yourself up. So if you're lying down, take a moment and slowly push yourself up. So take it nice and easy. Come back to our easy pose. Let's check in one more time. How's your heart? How's your breath? This time, how's your mind? And now, when we, if your eyes are closed, when you open them, just keep looking down at the ground for a moment to readjust to the bright room. And then we'll all take a stretch to wake up. <sighs> we'll bring our hands together with our hearts. Now, if your thumbs are together, I want you to we'll make a little wish today. We're going to bring our thumbs to our forehead. And we're going to whisper, think, or say out loud, whichever you prefer, think, kind, thoughts. And bring our thumbs to our mouth. Speak kind words. Then to our hearts, do kind things. So thank you for joining me and Nicola and CFI and Liz for our Yoga for Children for International Day of Yoga 2023. It was an honor to be able to do this and facilitate for you. I hope you've enjoyed it and thank you.